Good afternoon. Just uh, had a good morning with our team and uh, really proud of the way they performed on Saturday. Thought it was uh, just a great way to, to finish, to find a way to, to win an important road game in conference play. At, at, uh, um, anytime you go on the road, it's just, uh, you know, difficult. So we didn't play our best, but I thought we did a lot of good things, a lot of things to build off of for sure. But just the, the ability to, um, to finish, to have our defense on the field, um, as I said earlier, um, to be able to be the reason why the game closed the way it did, kind of be put back out there twice, um, and uh, but then challenge our offense about finishing. You know, we get that that first fumble that uh, Jawan Burgess creates and get the ball in great position, and you want to go in there and score a touchdown. And it's still defense had to come out and, and still had to finish. But uh, bottom line is, is is it was a complete team effort. Our guys. Uh, had some guys dinged up, and O-line was, was shuffled around a little bit, but still was able to rush for almost 200 yards, and Stevie went over 100, six yards of carry for him, and thought he ran really, really hard, protected the football, did a lot of great things. Played two different quarterbacks, obviously, and both of them played well, and uh, Peyton being able to throw for almost 200 yards and being 20 for 27 and just being really sharp and being prepared to, to do what he did was, was uh, very uh, encouraging. And... Uh, just even the, in the special teams, they had a really, really good return game that I was very concerned about. And, and being able to contain Leak, I thought was critical. And, and, uh, and then they had zero punt return yards. So just a lot of positive, had zero penalties on, on special teams, which has been a big focus. So those are things that we have told our team that, that uh, that's how you have to, to function, to win on the road and to be able to be, play a clean game in those areas. And just thought our coaching staff made some good adjustments at halftime defensively. Our defense uh, uh, gave up two big plays throughout the game that, that were costly, but uh, in the second half really, really shut them down and made some good adjustments at halftime. So, so uh, appreciate the work that our defensive staff, Coach Womack's leadership there, and, and then Coach DeBoer offensively come up with a good plan, got off to a fast start, two touchdowns, first two drives, and, and uh, just being able to keep the pressure on. The touchdown before half was huge. Uh, great momentum, awesome play by... Uh, Nick Westbrook, he had six catches and played really, really well. So uh, proud of our guys, but uh, really challenged them and then went through the film and to, to focus on the areas that we have to, to really uh, hone in on to continue to grow as a football team. But anytime you can go on the road and get that kind of win the way that it happened, it helps your, your team grow and develop the belief and confidence in the, what we're doing. And just the, the weight room, the strength that they feel, the workout again today, just continue the, just the momentum that we're building in there and uh, being able to um, do a good job of finding a way to, to win a game on the road, which is, which is critical. So really, uh, really proud of our guys, but have to continue to stay focused on the details. That's where we have to really, I think, fine tune everything that we're doing and just keep getting better. And then uh, because of all that, players of the game, um, Stevie Scott and... Uh, Peyton Ramsey were both high, highly uh, uh, achieving guys, but Peyton Ramsey's the one that we chose to go with for the offensive player of the game uh, just because of the ability for him to execute at a high level uh, coming off the bench like he did. And uh, defensively, a couple guys that stuck out to me and our staff, Joan Burgess and Reese Taylor, defensive players of the game, two critical takeaways. But it was just it was bigger than that. It was the way they played the entire game, their, their mindset throughout practice all week long, the way they prepared, uh, just everything is continuing to be on an incline for both of those guys in the secondary. Logan Justice is our special teams player of the game, two key field goals that were the difference in the game. Points-wise, continues to be very steady for us and do a great job. Um, throughout the week, defensive scout of the week, Christian Love, and uh, Offensive Scout of the Week, Deshaun Brown and Tim Weaver. And then Special Team Scout of the Week, Joseph Daniels. So um, felt like that we had a very good week of preparation. Um, still did not feel like that we executed at the, at the level we need to consistently throughout the game. But at the same time, as we mentioned, um, the guys were able to bow up, find a way to win, and then have a great celebrated locker room, which is a, always a great thing to experience. So proud of our guys. Questions? The offensive line in particular, I think we asked you about it Saturday, but as you're able to kind of go back and look at how Matt Bedford's grown mm -hmm. and how Simon Stepaniak handles moving over to the left side for I think maybe the first time in his career, at least as a starter, mm -hmm. Harry obviously going to center and McKenzie coming in almost from the cold, just how impressed were you with the way that those guys played? Very. 
You know, and I attribute to them and to Coach Hiller and the job that he does. And um, I thought those three guys you mentioned, you know, we obviously had three different positions there affected uh, by having Harry move to center and then moving Simon to left guard and, and then McKenzie playing right. So just thought Matthew continues to progress. Um, but he really saw all those big runs that Stevie was having there in the second half and, and uh, was, was him just – caving in the, the offensive the defensive line and just creating a lot of movement and our, our tight ends blocked well on several of those as, as also but but uh you know harry had you know did a great job snapping the football that's that's a dynamic that you forget about until you get a bad snap and uh so he did a great job with the snaps and then uh um just he, he's a good center he really is he's got a good base to him he's strong he's smart and so hadn't had a lot of reps there but i will say this we um we kind of probably got into we were two full weeks into the camp and, and I just said, okay guys, it's time for us to shuffle the old line and let's get Harriet Center and let's get guys shuffled around a little bit, play some different spots. And uh, we played, even played coy at guard. I mean, just tried to get guys different. We did it for several practices in a row. And I think that really paid off for us, yes, you know, this past game. Uh, just because knowing, look, looking forward, that you just never know what may happen to the offensive line and having guys that can play multiple spots uh, helps them for their future because that's what the NFL is looking for, guys that have that versatility to play multiple positions because of the the, uh, the number of linemen they have on their roster and how many they carry to a game each week. So that's a, you know, a big selling point for our guys is in their development and what they want for their future. So but Coach Hill did a great job of that. So i just really, really proud of our line. they got to keep getting better. Um, but uh, – I feel like that, uh, you know, expect to get Hunter back this week. He, he was, he warmed up and we went through it and had, had the discussion about it. You know, possibly he probably could have gone, you know, but uh, hadn't got a lot of reps. Um, and so we felt, you know, if we could just hold him for one more week and, and, and be able to still get what we want, then it, and I think it served itself well there because now he's should be fully recovered here by the time we get to, to Saturday. He'll be practicing with us this week and, and uh, got off to a good start today. So to get him back and, and get those guys back to their normal spots. Uh, Coach, in, in regards to Reese Taylor um, and, and the play that he made at the end of the game there, you know, you've said in the past that he's he's been taking the defensive back position in stride, but when he was such a successful quarterback at Ben Davis and then he came over and um, just to make a play like that in a game like that, what does that say about his development? And did you say anything specifically to him uh, regarding that situation? Uh, well, I mean, man, I, after I gave him a huge hug, man, I uh, um, just so proud of him. You know, he's such a great person, works so hard. And I know he's been frustrated because of the injuries and hasn't been out there uh, like he wanted to be because of that. And uh, but now he's gotten back and, and um, it showed up on special teams last week and now on defense. And and uh, but, you know, that's that's the ball savviness that he has, you know, and just being a former offensive player, you know, specifically a quarterback and being able to, you know, Finish the play, you know, it's a little probably tougher catch than it looks, you know, but it was overthrown, but it was overthrown because of the, the rover doing his job and taking away that seam route uh, by the vertical number two. And he's an overlap player in that coverage. And that's what he, he did exactly what he was supposed to do. So you, know, you get rewarded for being in the right place at the right time. But he's a he's an excellent football player and one of our best athletes without question. So I just can I just see him continuing to grow in his his, uh, you know, performance and, and execution and just being comfortable out there at corner, but uh, he's one of our, you know, elite players in my mind in terms of quickness and change of direction, and and he's, and he's got a toughness to him. He'll tackle, uh, even though he's not the biggest guy, but uh, um, just a really really good football player. So awesome for him. So proud of him, and, and happy for him to have that opportunity. And, and he he uh, he came through for his team. It was awesome. Coach, uh, I know last week you mentioned that uh, early into the into the season you checked on Stevie when he was when things weren't going all good, and he told you he was fine. Uh, but talk a little bit, just big picture, with this offense as a whole. When you get as much out of him as you've been getting now these last three four weeks. Well, you know, first of all, with, with Stevie's situation, you know, I, mean, I I did check on him, but I mean, he was almost kind of like, Coach, man, I'm I'm good, you know, don't worry about me, but. Uh, he still, you know, he's only a sophomore, and, and he had a, a, you know, such a big freshman year that I just wanted to make sure he was keeping everything in in check, you know, and having the right mindset, and don't want to assume things, you know, and, and uh, sometimes guys may look that way on the outside, but you, you want to give him an opportunity to to sit down with you face to face and talk it through. So, but he's been awesome. He understands, and and. Uh, 
it's been neat to see him rewarded for that patience, you know, and uh, he's catching the ball out of the backfield. He's running the football. He's, you know, and, and Kalen does a tremendous job. He, I look at all, all the different guys that are catching balls and, and uh, you know, Wap only had two catches in this game, but uh, he's had a whole bunch in the last couple. And, and uh, but uh, other guys stepped up and had big games as well. And they, they several times had him bracketed, you know, but you can't. You know, you do that to one guy, it's going to create opportunities for, for a guy like Nick, and, and, and he took advantage of it. And, and Peyton Hendershot had a bunch of catches again. I think he had six. So, you know, just, you know, being a, a, a bunch of individuals that care more about the team is what we have on offense. And we talked about that this morning as well, you know, and just guys, the way our offense can distribute the football and O-line is really kind of coming into their own and, and, and just need to see them respond, as I already mentioned, with having some new guys in there and, and playing some different positions and, and uh, playing two different quarterbacks and, and both of them playing extremely high level and very efficient and effective. And, and so to me, that's a tribute to, to Coach DeBoer and, and his system, and, 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 uh, which has become our system, you know, but I did let him come in and, and, and implement what, what he knew and believed in, and, and uh, we've, it's become ours, you know, and our, all the coaches on that side of the ball, it's, it's now what we do. And so, but I think it's a, it's a great fit for our guys, and, and uh, they've really, um, you know, are, are starting to get into a, a rhythm and a groove of, of understanding the reads and just sitting through all the meetings again this morning with offense and, and, and watching the film together with, with the, the players and the staff and, and the coaches there. They're just, just a need to see that confidence growing, you know, and, and, and understand and where you know the ball needs to go each time and everything up front and and uh, so it's just it's really uh, you know at the, at the right time you know coming together and, and they need to play at a high level this point in the season and and they are and so to be able to to continue to do that is going to be critical for our future success so just really proud of uh, that side of the ball but we got we, got, we do got to finish we, get, we needed to finish that game off we need to put that team away there in the second half and, and uh, not make it come down to the final series but uh, it did and and uh, we responded yeah. Again, something else we asked you about Saturday, and you've kind of been asked in different ways about it today, and I imagine there's stuff you probably won't tell us, but um, with regard to the defensive adjustments, just kind of what were maybe some of the things you talked about basically getting back to things that you felt guys were really comfortable with. Mm -hmm. What were some of those things that just allowed you to be so much better, in particular in, in limiting Maryland's explosiveness in, in yeah. the second half? Well, I think, you know, it, Defensive football to me is so dependent upon um, three key variables, and it all starts with um, we always take takeaways, tackling effort, and those are, those are huge, and those are foundational things that we that I preach. We say, hey, we install those three things every single day, and we do. We make a huge deal about them, okay? But it really all starts with run fits because you, if you don't stop the run, then everything else just kind of falls apart from there because then they got you know they can do two things to you. They can run it or they can throw it because that obviously sets the other one up. So it's those run fits. It's being able to be confident in those fits to be able to, because that affects your tackling. If your spacing's not right, then you get out of position and you miss tackles. Okay. And then, and it just, and it all just kind of crumbles from there. So to me, it was being able to just kind of go back to making sure we're being simple enough to get the run fits right, to make sure that we're not, you know, the layers aren't out of whack and the spacing's not out of whack and, and our guys are really, you know, more of a compressed, contested type mindset that I really believe in to be able to, to take away those windows and the easy throws and the access throws and make them earn every little thing that they get. I, I believe in that. I think that's, I think it's hard to drive the ball, you know, up and down the field by having to snap it over and over and over again. And so you got to eliminate those big plays by swarming the ball. It's the effort that you get to the ball, the, the gang tackling. And so all those things just kind of go in. And our kids played, man, they played so hard. And, and we, we, we usually play really hard. That's one of our, I think, one of our biggest, um, you know, things that we're known as when you watch us play. And I want that to always be the case. There's a lot of reasons for that. But, but defensively, it's, it's just, you know, Although it all starts with those fits and, and working on those and even how we practice and modifying some of that to, to try and get a better look. We did we made changes with that because sometimes when you have, you know, your your scout teams, they don't always, especially up front, it's hard to simulate, you know, a full set of Big Ten offensive linemen. Okay, it's almost impossible to do that with that group. And so therefore, sometimes it can get skewed when you practice to what the, 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 what the linebackers are seeing, because by the time it gets to them, it already gets, especially in the run game. So we just had to make some changes to how we approach that, and just to, to get a cleaner, better 
look for our defense so we can get the fits right. And everybody's, you know, from a technical perspective, where they're supposed to be. And so we've just, just kind of been almost a back to basics approach to that and simplifying some things, throwing some stuff out and adding a couple little things here and there that I felt like we needed to do. And, and just, you know, just working with, with, with Coach Womack and just getting it right, you know, and, and just making sure because we do still have a lot of guys that don't have a ton of reps. You know, and so just making sure that we execute at those critical times. So that, that to me is where I think it was the biggest thing. And even in the second half, we did some, you know, they were doing a lot of things that we were a little bit unique and different than what we planned for. And so we had to be able to adjust to that. And so, um, but I just think that's where, because that gives our guys a lot of confidence when they know where they're supposed to be. They're playing faster. And a guy like Jerwan Burgess, man, he just he continues to play faster and faster and more confidently. And, and then we had several effort plays. We showed our team this morning about guys just running things down from the backside and getting a bunch of guys around the ball because when you're playing against some of these elite guys, it's hard for the first guy to get him on the ground. And so he, he makes that one guy miss with a proper angle. Then the second guys are going to be there to, to finish him off. So that to me is really kind of in a nutshell what we've tried to emphasize. And, and, and the guys just continue to communicate and execute, communicate and execute as they're playing their tails off. So that's really our formula on defense. I guess a couple of days after the game now, you guys are 5-2. and two. Are you thinking about being one win shy of a bowl game? Are you trying not to think about that? And how are you coaching your team? Well, the, here's how I look at this. So, you know, we're 5-2 and two after playing seven games. And it's a little bit different dynamic than, than we've been in the last two years. You know, we kind of, it was more the end of the season where this situation occurred. And so to me, like if you, you talk to any of our players, that there's no mention of winning six. I mean, it's, they understand, and we talked about this this morning, that this is the biggest game of the season because it's our next game. And, yeah, it's obviously, you know, you win the next game, you win your sixth game, and we understand what all that means. But that is, is to me, the objective is for us to be at our very best and play our best football in Lincoln, Nebraska on Saturday. And, and if we continue to focus like that, then it takes care of itself, you know. And so for me, you know, we, at the beginning of the season, we, we set a goal as a team that we want to win our bowl game, not just get to a bowl game. We want to win our bowl game. That was one of the goals that we set up and that, that the players came up with that goal. And so obviously, you know, there's a lot of things that there's no, no, no picking numbers here. You know, we want to be our very, very best. And we, we believe if we keep getting better every single week and we focus on one thing at a time, which right now it's completely on Nebraska. And we give them our very, very best effort of focus during the week. We play our best game of the season on Saturday. Then we'll, we'll like the outcome, okay? And then when that's done, you go work on the next one. And that's been our approach all season long, and that's not going to change, you know? And so, but at the same time, I get it. They'll be asked about it. We talked about it this morning in that regard, but, but it's about having a focus. That's the mental toughness it takes to be great in, in our program. And to me, I want it to be a point where that's just – part of the expectation and that's what I want and so I understand it I understand where we are what's in front of us and so do our players and they're excited about the opportunity to go and play together again as a football team you know on the road and that's uh, the whole objective is to be able to be at our best on Saturday. Matt, uh, Coach obviously going to Nebraska this week um, the guy assuming Martinez plays I know he's been banged up dynamic quarterback guy you recruited Wondell Robinson who's really dynamic the running back is good from a defensive point of view what what concerns you? What do you see from them on film that you guys really have to try to take away? Yeah, well, it is like every offense. It all starts with the quarterback. So um, Martinez is a special player. Uh, didn't play last game before their bye. Um, but uh, he. it all runs through him. He's extremely athletic, uh, can throw it, can run it, um, understands their offense. And, uh, you know, it's it's like any other quarterback that you that you face. You have to you have to affect him. You can't let him be comfortable. You can't let him be able to uh, feel good about what he's seeing and uh, you got to be able to um, disrupt him and so but he's surrounded with a lot of good athletes you know as you mentioned you know Wandale Robinson a guy that we recruited hard and know well and very very special player you know and just so dangerous in space and you know the running backs I mean there's just whoever's in there I mean they got several receivers the Spielman kids a talented player and, and Washington and just you know 26 and just all the different guys that they had they got some big old tight ends you know so um a very dangerous offense put up can put up a lot of points um and uh but 
you know, it's like anything else. I mean, you've got to, you got to execute. They have to, and so do we. You know, and defensively, they're really big up front and very physical, and um, they play really hard. And uh, they've got some really good football players, and and uh, they're going to change some things up, and they're going to keep you off balance, and and uh, they're trying to do everything we're trying to do on defense. And I know their staff well, and I got a ton of respect for for Coach Frost and all his coaches, and and got to know him when they were at Central Florida, and and the job that they did there, and, and he took all of his guys with him, and, and I respect him for that, and and uh, they know each other well, they have great chemistry as a staff, they've been together for a, a while, and and that's important, you know, and so and they're and they're that's why you're seeing, you know the. The consistent growth from them, you know, from last year to this year, you know, so, but uh, then you throw in the, the venue that you're playing in, you know, I mean, I, I, I saw it was what, since like 1962, they've had sellouts, you know, which is, that's a phenomenal stat, you know, that's a, quite a testament to their program and everything that they've accomplished, and you're know, just growing up as a kid, you know, you know, just Coach Osborne was the guy that I looked up to, you know, and the way that he ran his program and the kind of man that he was. And, and this is my first trip to Lincoln, you know. Um, so, but at the same time, you know, to me, that, this is the cool part about it is we're, we're playing the 2019 Huskers, okay, and the team that shows up and the 11 guys they put on the field. And that's the key, you know, and not, not all the guys that played there in the past, you know. So, but uh, our guys have played in a lot of great places. And so we're looking forward to the opportunity to go to Lincoln and play. And I know it's going to be an amazing atmosphere, and, and uh, we're looking forward to that. And they'll all be wearing red for us, which is pretty cool. And uh, we'll, we'll embrace the atmosphere and the environment, and our guys are going to go there and play their tails off. Uh, update on Michael Penix's status and how do you prepare the uh, how do you handle pr the preparation for the quarterback position during the week? Yes, update on Michael Penix uh, right now. Uh, do not know uh, his status will be. It'll be a game time decision, and so uh, but uh, the, so the plan will be to, to prepare like we have every single week to be able to um, have Peyton ready to roll, and he'll have a great week of practice, and just like he did last week, and. And, uh, and then Jack will be ready as well. So those guys in that room will be doing their best to prepare, and uh, Michael as well. And we'll do everything we can to to get him back, if at all possible. So, but uh, that's uh, that remains to be seen. Coach, you talked about the environment going out to Nebraska, playing, of course, one of the iconic programs in college football history. We all know who they are. But how, how do you keep the guys mentally level down, especially with all that's laying out? The bowl eligibility mm -hmm. is there for the taking sure. as well. How do you keep that mental uh, outlook where it needs to be? Well, we started last week even in, by, in talking through and, and the, the word that I picked for that week and, and just the things that we talked about at the hotel on Friday night. Um, about the ability to uh, to block out the noise, you know, and just talk to them about um, when we do what I believe. And I had this conversation with our guys during fall camp. When I when when we start doing the things I believe we're going to do this season, um, and what's going to be, you know, the result of that is that how how can we block out all the noise and the noise is, is criticism when things aren't going well and it's pats on the back when things are going well and you have to have the ability to focus through all that and that's where you teach your guys and so we talk to him about you know Tom Brady has some quotes about that and some things he talks about how he's been able to to, to function at a consistently high level where he's at you know um, and as to how he's been able to do that and we talked about those things just to be able to to as you say embrace what's in front of you, you know, but our guys, man, they're used to playing in a lot of great places, you know, and, and uh, we've, uh, we, we get excited to go to play in those spots and our guys uh, have played well on the road and, and uh, in the past and, and uh, expect us to play to well on Saturday, you know, so I think you, you, I, I like feeding off of that, feeding off the crowd and feeding off the environment, feeding off the opportunities ahead of us. And, you know, this is why, you know, I came here to help Indiana, you know, change the defense when I got here, you know, change the culture of the defense was my job task I was given from Coach Wilson. And now as, as a head coach, I want to I want to change the way this program is viewed, you know, in, in the, the lifetime of our current players, you know, and and, uh, and I just want to be able to create that change. And, and I've used the word breakthrough and, and that's that's a foundational vision that I have it has different layers and different meanings. But but uh, that hasn't changed. And so opportunities like this you know to, to play in places like this is is why you know our players come here and we, when we recruit these guys about going and playing in these kind of games and opportunities to, to make history for our program to help us do things and reestablish things that haven't happened for a while and and our guys embrace that you know and that's part of 
finding guys that want that, you know, and that, that, that have that desire, you know, like Taiwan Mullen came to help us do these things that we want to do and a whole bunch of other guys in that locker room that came here for that reason but he i mentioned him because he specifically you know mentioned some of those things to me when he came on his official visit and so uh, but to me that's that's what this is all about and and then you got to have tremendous focus i mean you have to be able to, to to stay locked in and how can we get better this week how can we play our best football in this environment that's the key and that's where you know we got to become a, a more mature football team every time we take the field and that's my job as a coach to help them understand that and and that's why you can't just run from the chatter. You, know, you have to be able to embrace it, but you also have to have the earmuffs and blinders to, to stay focused. And that's the fine balance that it takes. And had this same conversation with, you know, with, with Michael Penix when he started having some success. How do you handle that? You know, and, and it's different when you're just off to the side and, and you're not getting all these, you know, whatever they're saying about you in, in a good way or the negative about you. you know? So that to me is just part of us growing as a team and, and helping these guys just – to be at our best, and that's what it comes down to. And, and uh, so we're excited to be able to take this next step. Coach, uh, I know you mentioned Michael's a game time decision for Saturday, but what, uh, if anything, can you say about your, uh, him being able to practice starting as soon as tomorrow? Do you know anything about that yet, or is that going to be a day by day thing? I'll as well? probably I'll probably know some more this afternoon. You know about that, so then we'll just have to take it day by day and see where that leads us. But uh, don't have that answer for you right now. All right, thank you so much. Have a great day, Elio.